red sand palm, yeah? Zhu Sha Zhang. In fact, Zhu Sha Zhang, like it's not in Chinese, red means Hong, Hong Sha Zhang. But <coughs> this is called Zhu Sha Zhang, means cinnabar palm. Yeah, it's another color. But in English, we translate red sand palm because it's easier to translate sometimes. Um, in fact, Zhu Sha Zhang, Tie Sha Zhang, Mian Sha Zhang. All these kind of systems like iron palm, red sand palm, cotton palm, these are all different ways of conditioning of the palm and the fingers and the wrists and the arm all together. Yeah? It's all different ways. We don't say this system is better than that system or whatever. Like every system has his benefits. And Zhu Sha Zhang is one system what I have learned. Yeah? I also have learned theoretically like Hei Sha Zhang, black sand palm or black iron palm or Wu Du Zhang, like five venom palm. All these kind of stuff, these are different ways of conditioning. Like Wu Du Zhang means like five venom palm, means inside your Ditta Zhou, the mixture what you put on your hands after you hit or before you hit the bags is <coughs> includes venom, five different venoms. But because the venom is like the you know the like the quantity or how to say it's very very less, it doesn't hurt you. It doesn't hurt your body and your like if even it goes into your blood, it doesn't hurt you. Yeah. But through time because you do it every day, you can increase that and then with the time, with the hitting and within the sand inside the back what you're hitting, there are also kind of venoms or kind of poison. So with the time it enhances and then the yeah, amount of poison what you have in your hand is much much more than a person normally can withstand. With the punch and the way how to punch and bring the power out, you can punch with poison. This is the venom palm. This is not what we do. Yeah? So, or this is also like black sand. Black iron palm is also called Wu Du Jiang. Why? Because in um, these venoms, like these five venoms or five different, it's like from uh, one kind of scorpion, one kind of black snake. Yeah, like these kind of venoms, they all with the time build a black color within your palm, especially in the back side of your palm because you condition also the back side. Yeah. So <clears throat> why it is so important and why I decided to teach it openly, not only to a small circle as I did before, but to anyone who is here right now. And anyone who is like online can learn it. Yeah? Because I do believe that people, because when I first said, okay, red sand palm, it will be one first of the camps will be red sand palm, people of the inner circle ask me how you want to do this because this is like a, like a secret teaching. Why you teach this openly? And do you think uh, you want to check the people come here before that and whatever? <clears throat> no, because I believe that I'm not able to check the people, firstly. Tao does this. And Tao leads the people to here who should learn these things. And I can't decide who deserved to learn this and who doesn't deserve, who haven't deserved. So I can't decide that. So therefore, we teach this openly and even in the internet, we teach this, yeah? And only people who deserve this will be able to access. This is my, my, my idea and my mindset behind this. Yeah? So red sand palm, yes, it was uh, <coughs> passed down to master, Grandmaster Long. 
and all his students learned part of it. Because red sand palm or cinnabar palm have different aspects and different parts. One is the neigung. One part is the neigung or the qigong. One part is the yigong, mind work. One part is the hardening, conditioning. Yeah, like yin qigong. Another part is the meditation. Another part is the diet. What to eat, what not to eat. What time to eat, what time not to eat. All these kind of stuff. Yeah? And we are not able within one month to do all of that. We are able to introduce that. Because the main program goes 100 days. The main program goes 100 days and with it one, within this 100 days it starts with a kind of a special bigu. Bigu means like Taoist way of diet. Yes. The first 33 days is one part, second 33 days and the last 34 days is another part like in this three. And in the middle the main essential time the middle 33 days, basically you eat only veg some kind of veg, not all, some kind of vegetables and one, some kind of like fruits, also not all kind of fruits. Yeah, this is like the diet. The first 33 and the last 33 is the way how to go there and how to go back to normal eating. Yeah, this is the 100 days of diet. This I will introduce to you theoretically, but I will not do this within this one month. First of all, it's not 100 days time to do that. Second, the environment and um, like the people as you are right now, I'm not sure if some people get crazy or not. So, so we will stay with the Qigong, the meditation, which is already very heavy and with the physical work, yeah? But you will learn the diet, so one day if you want to do this for yourself, you will know how to do that, yeah? Still, still my suggestion is, you want to do that, get in contact with me before you start that. Yeah, if you have one day the will to do it, get in contact with me before. And <clears throat> my suggestion for that is take 100 days out from your social life and make it happen that you do this diet in combination with the Qigong and the meditation of course without having much social like desires around you. Let's say you have a family, it's not a good idea within the whole family thing. You take care for your kids, you take care for your partner, whatever, and then do this, this is not good. This will be not so fine. Yeah? So if you can, be somewhere for yourself or you have a family but your partner knows about those kind of stuff and supports you and you don't have like uh, to worry about having coro sometimes or something like this and this kind of stuff yeah Th because this uh, combining this diet combining with the qigong and the dazuo means the meditation makes significant changes inside your own world and this makes changes inside your outer world inside your inner world and this will make changes inside your outer world because your inner world reflects into the outside yeah your mindset and main like state of jing means essence physical essence manifest around you yeah therefore for intro Doing it, this month is very good, you will learn it theoretically and all the other parts you will practice also practically, theoretically and practically. Yeah? But the diet, diet part, it is just the wisdom, you get it and then you 
wait for the time uh, to come out, yeah, to ripen. Okay, so the physical part of Zhu Sha Jiang has five main practices, physical part. Five main practices connected to the five elements and connected to the five daily times according to the elements. Yeah, what we start today is, for example, with the, after like 11 p.m., it's the fire element. Yeah, like before, before 11, it's still the fire element. So we will start with the candles and then after this later, we will go on to the wood element, which is after that. Yeah, so the 24 hours is like they are divided into these five elements where the element fire comes twice yeah and the other elements once so it, like our practice when we practice let's say the the wood element it is in the time of the wood on the day yeah this is not a dogma this is not fixed like this if one master wants his students to overcome, let's say, to overcome the wood element, then this master will work with the metal element to cut the wood. Yeah? Because in, according to Chinese five element theory, metal like Agnan X cuts the wood like this. Or if you are too much in your rituals and go with the metal element, the master will work with the fire element to melt this metal. And so on and so forth, yeah? So, the way what we do is now, <coughs> yeah, the creating line or nährende circle. How to say? Nourishing. nourishing. Yeah, and the nourishing circle of the five elements. This is the way what we use. But this is not a dogma that every time it's used like that. Yeah, it's now for us and for our practice of the red sand palm physical training, it's that way. So there are different kind of palm conditioning methods. As I said, we start with the fire tonight and then every day, every night, I will teach you something new to add. I will not teach to, tonight all the five elements. Yeah? So the candle work or punching out the candles, this, is, this belongs to the fire. It also belongs to the fire element to punching down the sun. Sometimes it's not in the fire time, but it belongs to the fire element. Punching down the moon belongs to water element. Yeah. Rubbing sand belongs to the earth element. Hitting the iron bags belongs to the iron element, and so on and so forth. Yeah, so we will we will learn about all these physical practices, and without these five element, um, I call it the application ways for the red sand palm system, because without these you have neigung power, but you are not able to bring it out too much. So with these five elements, you are able with the time to bring it out. The Qigong system of Red Sand Palm itself has three parts. Three parts. First part, condensing Qi, Verdichten, condensing. This is the first part. This goes between one and three years. This is the first part of the Qigong set. Then there is the second part of the Qigong set, which we all also learn within this month, is circulating and enhancing the Qi flow. How to bring the Qi into flow within your small heavenly circle, within the big heavenly circle, and bring it to the Laogong points, Yongchen points, Baihui, Yintang, Renjung, and so on and so forth. Yeah, this is the second part. Normally this part starts once when the first part is done. We learn it now, so you know the way. And when your first 
part is done and you are willing to do it, you can do it with the time. The third part is releasing and emitting chi. Means bringing out chi. And this is the first way from where to bring it out. The first way is from your eyes, second is from your laogong points and your fingertips. This is the third part. So talking about this, again the first part takes time between one and three years. And this is not how hard you train, it's faster, and how lazy you train, it's maybe not so fast. It's not this. It's not like, okay, I do every day, every day Qigong, and then it will open faster. No. It's about when it is ready, the, it will be there, you know. This is like when the small heavenly circle opens up. Yeah, this is the first part. So this can be between one and three years. Yes, in some cases, yes, it can be also faster or longer than three years. But mainly, general, this is the time what we uh, refer to, like between one and three years, when you practice daily. Yeah? As I said before in a Qigong theory class, Qigong is not like training exercises. Training exercises, you have training days and then you have days to recover. But in Qigong, this is like food. You can't say, okay, today is Sunday, it's, it's, I don't eat. Or today is like uh, our Wednesday, we're free, so I don't, I don't uh, do qi. Qigong. is like food and nutrition, like you do this every day, like you eat every day. There is also not one day that you say, okay, today I'm very tired from eating, that's why I need to recover. No. Yeah? So therefore, you must understand what Qigong is, especially this also red sand palm system, when you start that. Like Master Long always said, this is a lifelong thing. Yes, it's up to you if you will follow that or do it for yourself lifelong or not, it's up to you. But it is a lifelong thing if you want to follow it. So from there, this one up to three years, this time comes from there. Yeah, you, of course you can practice and then do your rest a couple of weeks and then practice again. Rest one day, practice again. Then I don't know how long it will take. Yeah. But with daily practice, it is said it can be within a year, two years or three years, must be you overcome this first part. And there are significant points how to realize that you are there. Like for yourself and for people from outside also, able to see it. So this is the first part. The second part, bringing Qi at will, at will to any point of your body, this is from that point on another seven years, they say. From that point where you are, when the first part is opened already, from that point on another seven years. With that your big heavenly circle should be open. And then the third part, there is no time given what time this happens. Because now we talk about Bai Hui, opening the Bai Hui and bringing the Qi out. Like, bringing the Qi out even is easier than opening the Bai Hui. Yeah. Bai Hui, the like point of 100 gatherings, is the highest point on our body when we stand. So this is the connection also to the heavens all eight heavens and the connection to the angels, connection to the immortals, connection to Tao. Before that, when we open the yin tang, this is the connect connection to demons, various different demons and other beings, to animals. Yeah, but opening the Bai Hui, this is something else. So, there, nobody gives a time. Nobody tells, okay, after this seven years, then you have another five years to do that, or twelve years, whatever. They don't say any time. So therefore, these are the three parts. And it is said, the meditation, which you also will learn together, from the second part on, the meditation should be also like the Qigong, 
everyday food, everyday nutrition. Before that, it can be done in, at some nights, and at some nights you don't do it before that. But after the first part is done, you start with the second part, your mountain lake meditation. It's called mountain lake meditation. It uh, should be done every day like the Qigong. Yeah. So, okay. I will tell later, because Chan San Fung had five suggestions to his seven disciples how to train. And all of them is in the night. All of Chan San Fung's suggestions, every kind of training, it was in the night. So therefore I also take this uh, method for the night. Long Sifu, when, when we were training under Long Sifu, he also were telling us how he trained be back then. Basically his training was like not only for a period of time, it was whole, like in his whole life, it was always starting at 3 a.m. 3 and 3.30 starting. So Chan San Fung's suggestions is, this is what we will do tonight too, but we will look at that time again to the sky, because it's depending on how the weather is, how the sky is, if you can see the stars or not. Like in clear nights and full moon, this means if the moon is more than half rising or, uh, how to say, rising or upnehmen. Yeah, yeah. So the days after the half full moon and before the half, like when, like these are about 14 days, 14, 15 days. Yeah. So in this time, if you can see the moon and you can see the light of the moon, you practice sword. In dark nights means it can be full moon, but if it's dark, if it's like cloudy, dark, or when the moon is less than half, before half and after the half, like less, the other 14, 15 days, you practice Taiji. Sword at night, in clear nights and bright nights when you can see the moon shine, this enhances the Qi. Taiji at dark nights enhance the energy, the power. Like Li, Li. It's like the energy what you can see physically. Yeah. In windy nights, it's hiking or climbing. This is good for the stamina and for the lungs. So when it's very like stormy and windy, it's always hiking, not on a straight road like this, like hiking up or climbing. Yeah. So <coughs> in midnight or in rainy nights, reading, rainy nights, when it's rainy, yeah? not stormy, but rainy, just th then they refer to old classics, yeah? like, how to say in English, besinnung, contemplation. contemplation, something like this, yeah, like reading, and not like chik -chik -chik reading fast, re like reading, let's say, two sentences, and then make your thought, deep thought out of that. And then continue another sentence and then find yourself inside this. Like this is like contemplating or deep thought about that truth, what you're reading there. This is in rainy nights. And at midnight meditation, yeah, we use that midnight for the mountain lake meditation during, during this camp now, yeah. So, okay more of a theory with the time. This is like generally what, what it is. And again, just, just to let you know, 
We have Zhu Sha Zhang, Mian Sha Zhang, Tie Sha Zhang, Wu Du Zhang, all kind of different iron palm, red sand palm, cotton palm, steel hand, whatever kind of methods. Yeah? Every method has its one kind of way, but all of them are great. All of them can, you know, when they hit, they really can hurt you. All of them. Yeah? There are, yes, there are differences, but all of them are great. And a Kung Fu guy, a guy who practices Chinese martial arts, if he wants to, it can be Taiji, it can be internal, it can be external, whatever. I don't care what the internalists say, I don't care what the externalists say. Doesn't matter what you practice. If you say you want to be able to defend yourself with that, what you do, you need a palm. You need, because this is the one of the seven stars what you use. At least one of them must be conditioned. Yeah? There are so many techniques that are shown in Taiji, or let's say in Bagua. Without that palm, they're really worthless. You can bring the technique, it doesn't hurt anyone. And especially, let's say, Bagua Zhang, it's the clever power, clever fighting. A lot of trapping and stuff also in there, and Chinna, Nafa, and Shuifa. Yeah? Throws, traps, locks, and like Chinna's kind of stuff. And trapping also. So, You, you have one technique, let's say you have, you have one technique, like she attacks me with this one straight, like you do this. I do this without a proper hand, you come, and the guy is trained, a very normal, let's say a normal big guy. He just smile at this, he just smile, like, like I hit this, I hit this, this guy must spit blood, then it is Kung Fu. If, if not, if I do this, he gives me one, two, three, then, then it's nothing. You know, the boxers, thank you, the boxers, they have their techniques. Very fluid, very useful, because, you know, when they move, they move very like, you know, like a panther. Very, very feng sung, what the Chinese traditional masters always say, feng sung, relaxed. And then they know how to bring power from short range how to bring it out. They have it. Yeah? So the Kung Fu guys must have their things. Yeah? When you look to Xin Yi Quan, Ba Gua Zhang, Ba Ji Quan, most of the attacks go to the upper body. They don't go to the face. They don't go to the chin. And like also people say, yeah, hitting the groin and stuff like this. Yes, they have it in, in, in Kung Fu too. But most of the attacks, when you see the five elements in Xin Yi, all go this way. How you think this was developed? How you think? If you hit somebody and it doesn't hurt, so you must think of what you must have as a skill doing this technique. The technique alone is nothing. What kind of skill you must have doing this technique and hitting the, the body? Yeah? So if you think martial, I mean, if you can be, you just think uh, health, ways, yeah, then it's another thing. But if you think martial and if you think about fighting, you must think what the Bung Chuan does. Why this doesn't go up and goes to the body? Why? It, if it can't hurt someone, your hand and your punch, because your joints are not ready, then you don't need to do that. Why we listen from old fighters, like let's say from Xin Yi people who never knew how, to, how it feels when they punch somebody twice. They, have, they don't have the feeling, they don't know how to feel, when, how, to, how it feels I punch a guy twice. Because every, the first punch was, that was it. So where are these people? Li Shu Wen, Shen Zhang Li, yeah, like spirit palm Li. Where are these people? One palm and the guy's chest is, comes out on the back or something like this. So how this works? 
This doesn't work with just training the technique. It works with the proper palm, and of course, not only with the, pro with the proper power, with the proper power what you can bring out or not. It works only like this. It doesn't work like, ah, oh, I got the technique. You know, you can have the technique of Li Shuven. But if you don't have the palm of Li Shuven, then this technique is nothing for you.